tracks and stuff. Uh, so, and a lot of what I, um, what I do for that, I learned through the Happy Video Game Nerd, just kind of figuring it out for myself. So, I never been to film school, but I've learned, I've learned what I know by failing and getting better and trying to make the best shit that I can. Uh, so that I think I think that gives me like a unique perspective um, because I don't know if you go to film school they teach you how to review video games that import Nintendo footage and make it look good and content and stuff like that. Um, now I said I don't have my gear, so I can't show you exactly what I do. But even if I did have my gear, um, I would still tell you that you do not need a nice camera, you don't need a great microphone, um, you don't need good editing software. Sometimes your compression can look like shit. You might have the wrong aspect ratios. It doesn't matter because script is king. It's the most important thing for your videos. And that if you take nothing else uh, home from this presentation, at least take home the fact that uh, everybody has a word processor. If your script sucks, your video sucks. No one's impressed with your special effects. No one's impressed with your nice transitions and stuff. If you open your mouth and you don't got shit to say, your video's gonna be shit. Bottom line, you have to have good scripts. So, um, and uh, I, that, that to me, that's the longest aspect of uh, the Happy Video Game. That takes the longest, which is why, by the way, I started doing other shows like, is it really that bad uh, that I don't have to uh, write really anything? It's just an editing, uh, just a video that involves a lot of editing, which is easier for me because I'm a slow writer. I have more confidence in myself as an editor, but I'm a really slow writer. That's part of the reason why my videos take a long time, but I really do try and make uh, the best scripts that I can. So, um, let's see, where should I start? It is best to write scripts when you're playing the game. But when you're playing the game, don't capture your gameplay footage. Just focus on the script. Oftentimes, by the time I've uh, done a review, um, I've beaten the game or played through most of it at least twice. Or sometimes I'll play the game all the way through while I'm writing the script, and then when I'm done with the script, I'll play maybe halfway through. Oftentimes I don't want to get to the very end, because I'm not going to use that footage, because I don't want to spoil it. So oftentimes I'll play through the game at least halfway, two thirds. Sometimes I do beat it. Uh, oftentimes I will show the ending to a game in a review, but I'll just kind of show it out of context. And I feel that's not really spoilers, because people who don't know the game don't know if that was the ending, or that's the last boss. Uh, but I find it is too much trouble to focus on capturing gameplay footage and writing a script. Uh, also, if you do that, you're going to capture way too much footage. Um, I like to play the game a second time once I have the script done, which I, I know what I'm going to say, know what I need, and then I can just get just enough footage what I need. If you have tons and tons, hours and hours of footage, it's going to cut into your editing time. So, figure that out first. Do one thing at a time, uh, and that'll just make everything easier, everything smoother, you'll probably have a better product at the end. Uh, so just focus on the script, it is the absolute most important thing. But it's also, when you write the best, when you play the game. It's good to kind of get away from the game and kind of write. I like to go to coffee shops and kind of be someplace else and kind of polish and punch up stuff. But when you're recalling something about the game, or a level, or a boss fight, you sometimes get it wrong. So it's best to have your laptop open, have whatever you're using open, and uh, play the game. And when, when you get an idea in your head, pause it and go right down and write down immediately. Uh, and during that part, you don't want to worry about having whole paragraphs or if this is going to fit with the flow of YouTube. No, just get that idea down. Move at the speed of thought. Just get your ideas down. Worry about that shit later. Uh, and also, I'm not sure if anyone else has this, but you know when you are playing a game, and there's like another part of your brain that's kind of elsewhere, and you can kind of find this strange, deep thought. Like it's a weird rela relaxation with playing games, I suppose I've played them for so long, that I actually am in a better mindset for deep thinking when I play games. You ever have like a strange epiphany about life <laughs> when you're playing games? Every once in a while I have those, it's really weird. Um, and you also write your best points about a game when you're playing. So that also helps with the script. Is play the game. Play it a lot. I find it's a rule of thumb to play it to the end. Um, I've, there are a handful of games that I have reviewed that I haven't finished, and I usually admit them. And some say that 
makes that invalidates my review, and that's fair to say. Um, I would say that I still play most of it, so it's a pretty, you know, some games are really bad, we play them for a couple hours, and you just like, I get the point. Uh, so, But that's because that game is really fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's, I, I've never reviewed anything quite that bad, but I did a, a review for uh, Sword of the Berserk, and it gets about two thirds of the way through to get this boss fight, and it is so insanely hard. I was just on that boss fight for like a half hour, 45 minutes, and uh, I already was not enjoying the game. And then I got to that boss fight, and I was just like, I can't play this anymore. So I decided that I, I wrote that in, I was honest at least. But there is that argument that, like, how do you know? Maybe the game gets really good at the end. I've been told that um, Paper Mario for the N64, I think has got a super slow, boring start. But I'm told once you get to, like, chapters 5, 4, 5, and 6, the game really takes off. And so, if somebody did review Paper Mario, and like, yeah, I got a third chapter, and it was just bored in my mind, it's probably fair to criticize them and say, well, the game does pick up. But at the same time, it takes till chapter 4 for the game to pick up, that's also a criticism. So, you can't please everyone. I'll get to that later. Yeah, well, definitely. I, swear it's 25 hours in, you just have to stick with it for I heard it gets shit hot after 20 hours, but I got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, one thing it's important to know about your scripts, though, is um, they're never finished, they're ready. Um, just because your script is done and you're proud of it, doesn't mean you ever stop writing it. Uh, it's important to, uh, if you're making a video review, you probably speak differently than you write, and you have different voices from when you are writing just text or when you're speaking out loud. So, say your scripts out loud. You know, write them here and then say it how you would. And change words. If there's a word that uh, is difficult to say or doesn't really feel right in a sentence, change it. And always do that. It's just because you've, you, also because you've written it and you've recorded it, doesn't mean it's finished. It's just ready. And remember, your scripts are not oak. They're not set in stone. So always change things. And you can sometimes have a line in a script, and you'll write it, and you'll rehearse it, and you'll record it, and you'll edit it. And you're just about to upload it, and you'll watch it one last time, and you think, that sentence actually doesn't make any sense. I just now realized that that doesn't make any sense. And to be fair, I have sometimes put videos up on Retro Road TV, and gotten feedback saying that you made a mistake or that doesn't make any sense or how dare you say that. <laughs> and I, I have changed certain lines, little bits and pieces, and like no one even notices. I did admit that I changed a lot of stuff for the Gargoyles Quest video because I thought it would be, be so many things people would notice, but no one actually did, so that was my weird self-consciousness. So there are two ways you could read a script. Um, and it's totally up to you how you do it. It is cadence versus uh, enunciation. Now, I'm dyslexic. I think in sounds. Um, I, don't, I don't really think in shapes. And so I've, uh, um, I'm not a very good reader, but I've always been a good speaker. But I've had a lot of experience in the radio. And uh, I'm, you know, I've, done, I've done a lot of hosting things and spoke in front of people. That's my strength. But some people you know, can do like a Nova type um, reading, and you really, really enunciate really, really well. It's a fine line. I, I have seen, uh, one second, one second, I'll get you yeah. um, a lot of people, they choose enunciation, and they end up sounding like a robot. So yeah. it's very stilted. Um, and I just prefer, to, that's just my style, is to kind of be more relaxed. Like no, like, no one says, where did you go? I went to the park. Went to the park, I went to the park. He said, where'd you go? Went to the park. Went to the park? Yeah, went to the park. That's just how I talk. And so that's kind of how I write my scripts, and that's how I deliver my scripts. But it's all, it's all to you. You got a question right there? Yeah, do you, okay, is there a certain degree where you overscript something? Mm -hmm. Do you allow for like ad-libbing, or you could play a game three times perfectly Mm -hmm. And for some reason, there's a glitch or there's some kind of weird thing that you never encountered before. Like you play like Kirby's Adventure and you found out that there's an infinite mic glitch or something. Yeah, like, I mean, do you allow for, you know? Games multiple times. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've come across stuff like that, and then written in the script, and I wasn't able to reproduce it, but I finished the script and went back to get the gameplay footage. I wasn't able to reproduce it. So it was just a fluke. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it might not be fair to criticize the game for it. Um, if you can reproduce it, you can be like, yeah, twice I've played this game, and it fucked up both times. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, I got infinite mics, and now the game is like stupid easy. <laughs> then that's fair to totally yeah. criticize. But I, I think you need to cover your bases, and uh, again, Always rewrite your scripts. And also for ad-libbing, uh, sometimes you get into the mic and you look at a line and sometimes you can't just say it in a, in a different, more relaxed way. Mm -hmm. Because I prefer cadence over enunciation. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten a bit of criticism for that, but that's just, that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah. Um, one of the things I've noticed a lot of people when they try to start out, especially when it comes to reading a script for a voiceover or whatever, mm -hmm. for whatever application is, sometimes they try, like you're saying, really trying to get a good, enunciation or articulation in their speaking. What are some tips you could give to someone to work more towards a relaxed or a more cadence-focused speaking style while reading or doing some sort of... It might come from a, a lesson I learned in college for writing. It was uh, know your audience. And a good rule of thumb for your audience is uh, never talk down to your audience. Talk to your, talk to your audience like they are intelligent, but they are uninformed. They are not stupid. They just don't know what you're talking about. And uh, I guess I try and try and talk like you're talking to a friend. Um, That's how I do it. I uh, I'm really jealous of uh, John T at Retro TV because he can do such a professional, natural uh, cadence. It's very well uh, enunciated. Um, I just can't do that. I, I just don't write with those big words and very uh, professional. Another great uh, inspiration and a good example is Brandon Jones at Game Trailers. I personally think he does some very fine work, and he was a big source of inspiration for me when I got started. Um, but then again, also, James does have that kind of, uh, like I said, the Jersey voice. Um, but that's, he has an accent like that, and he totally embraces it. And uh, it works well for his character. And I, I, it's kind of strange, too. I've been asked before what part of Brooklyn I'm from, or what part of Jersey I'm from. <laughs> I just talk like that sometimes. I'm from Anchorage. <laughs> I'm from Anchorage. So, I don't know what to say. It's some people can really pull up a professional enunciated cadence. I can't, but that's just for you to decide. You know, sometimes I get people who don't speak English. They say I speak too. In my older videos, I definitely spoke too quickly, and uh, I kind of mushed words together. And they said, "Hey, I can't really understand you," and that was fair. So I try to slow down. I'm also a bit of a hyperactive guy, and I do talk quickly, and so I just try to slow down. And uh, also, everything gets better. Practice. I'll get to this a little later, but um, your early shit is always going to be shit <laughs> because you're constantly getting better. So also practice too. And also, if you're recording your voiceover and you fuck up a line, stop, delete, and do it again. And I, I, I don't see it too often. Every once in a while, I hear somebody leave in a flub, <laughs> and I can't think. You couldn't have taken another two minutes, deleted that, and, and done that take again, do that line again. When I uh, record my voiceovers, there's a million cuts in it. Uh, I don't do an entire script in one sitting. I do a paragraph at a time, and sometimes the sentences just don't work, so I re-record those sentences. So also take the time to make sure you're doing it right. Okay. That's about all I have to say about scripts. Are there any questions? Did I pretty much cover it? I nailed it. Okay. Uh, do, that first. do you outline your scripts? Um, yes. Uh, when I first play the game, I do a rough draft, just bullet points. And um, sometimes what I'll do is, if game, for Sweet Home, there are so many aspects that, that uh, the gameplay that I wanted to talk about. The structure, I wrote down on uh, note cards, like all the different aspects, and I laid them on the table just so I could structure the video. You know, when should I talk about the item management? When should I talk about your character dying? When should I talk about, uh, you know, how many monsters you fight and all that stuff? So, I do, but a lot of how the flow comes out as I... I would say that I, I don't outline as much as you probably think. Yeah? And another quick question about scripting from a writing technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, is there a lot that you do in the script writing process to help prep up what the editing process is going to be? Such yes. as writing cues about when you want to specifically be on camera versus um, footage I, versus It's other. a pet peeve of mine to see people talk about something in a game mm -hmm. and uh, not show it. Right. If you're talking about 
all the boss fights are really hard, and you're just showing random gameplay footage from level two. It's, it, it kind of just distracts me. Like, I don't, what are you saying? Like, okay, you're, you're claiming that these boss fights are hard, but you're not showing me. And I, I don't know if I believe you, you have to prove it to me. So that's why it's important to get your gameplay footage after you have the script so you know exactly what you want. And it also makes the editing easy. You get to that point in the script, and I'm talking about the boss fight, where my, where's my boss fight footage? And I can put it in there. It really makes things easier to, to plan ahead like that. And, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say that uh, I'm a game journalist, and so one of the things that I'm getting into is uh, recording guides for games. Would you say that you would want to shoot? Do you still think that the script first is a better idea? I don't know how much experience you have with that. Sort of um, thing. There are few people in this world that can hit record on a camera and just spill 10 minutes of gold. Uh, I am not one of those people. I need to script everything I say. Um, I, my mind is, I need to structure my stuff. Uh, so I would say it would never hurt to at least have an outline. Um, you don't have to write down every word you say. Uh, if you are kind of, again, going for a more natural case, especially for like a walkthrough, but it just depends on how, I guess how professional you want to be. Um, that doesn't seem right, but that's really on you. Uh, at the end of the day, just make something that you would want to watch. Um, even though I have like a lot of disdain for uh, my uh, older videos and my older music. Actually, uh, Calvin Hansen over there is from Starship Amazing. He's the guy there. <laughs> also the Chrono Trigger video. He, he uh, really keeps me in check sometimes because he has more disdain for our older stuff. He's so always looking forward. And he's like, what's our oldest shit? I don't care moving forward. And that's not necessarily true, but it is a good mindset to have. It's just to kind of always be looking forward and be better in yourself. Um, and so you can watch what you've done, understand that it's not perfect, and try and do better, and figure out what it is you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. So do something one way, you know, depending how, how journalistic you want to uh, your push it, and try again the next time. Because you can't, sometimes you can't fix a house if the foundation's already shitty. Um, but you can start fresh on a, on a new foundation, build up from there, and make a better video, well, a better house. Um, I don't know what exactly the question is. Yeah. Yeah, do you find uh, one, one structure or one narrative structure to be more effective? I use the same one they taught me in high school, really. It's um, have an introductory paragraph with an opening statement that can get your audience, um, and then kind of state your case. What are you going to talk about? Talk about it. What did you just talk about? It's, it's, it's that's I pretty much. I just do a variation on that structure. Um, it isn't until I get to the history section that I just try and make an interesting story. That that structure is different. That you just kind of have to get a feel for, it. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, like, 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 like with a video with like Earth back, so much you can talk about. The, the, it is one of the most nested subjects in the history of video games. It is insane how much. How much is out there? You just have to pick and choose what's the most important thing to talk about. And there are some things that, uh, they might be important, but if you can't write them in the scripts in the way that makes it interesting, then maybe you should cut it. Uh, there are, if you can believe it, I had more things that I didn't like about Mega Man 10. Uh, I actually cut a couple things that just couldn't get it to work in the script. Um, and, uh, but for the history section especially, you just have to worry about making an interesting video, not a thorough one. Um, make a video that makes the audience want to play the game and be interested in the game, but you know, hopefully they will then play the game, enjoy it, and do more research on their own. I can't talk about every aspect of it. My videos are fucking long enough, so you can't talk about everything. I'm really bad at staying on specific questions. Was there another question I thought we were going to be yeah. yeah. Well, you basically answered it. It's just one thing I struggle with is like a five minute video versus like a 15 minute video. And. Write the script until it's, it's done. Do not think about length. It is finished when it is ready. When it's ready. I don't think about length. Um, when the Gargoyles Quest video ended up being almost a half hour long, I was no shit. Just, just, I wrote it until it just felt right. Um, and I. I want to say I've always had that mentality and maybe I've just gotten better, which is why my videos have gotten longer. And I've been able to find ways to work in specific parts about games into scripts that I feel make them better structure. Uh, I mean, you can make a five minute video that 
talks about everything you need to, uh, you can make a 15 minute video. I've found very little criticism that my videos are too long. So, again, you guys need to let me know if my videos do start getting too long because no one is telling me. Hmm. So I just assume, all right, well, 20 minutes is fine, how about 27 minutes, you know? So just work on it until it's done, until you feel ready. And then uh, when it is finished, look at it. What did you like about it? What did you like about it? What do you want to do again? Uh, what don't you want to do again? And also, you're never going to agree with your fans, too. That's, that, that is just yeah, how the world works. There's always going to be a disconnect between you and your fans. That's how it is. Hmm. I can't get to a little bit of the technical about what I do. Um, again, I don't have anything to show you, but I'll do my best to kind of explain uh, just some, some pointers. Uh, let's see. For video editing, I use uh, Final Cut. I've used uh, Adobe Premiere as well, and uh, they're both fine programs. Um, it really, they have tiny differences. Uh, and I, I, there's certain things about Adobe I really like, and there's certain things about Adobe I can't stand, and there's certain things about Final Cut I love that do so great, and then also there's things about Final Cut that really bug the hell out of me. It's really just a preference, they're both fine programs. And so, use either one you want. The problem with those programs, oh, yeah. I've not used Avid, no. I don't know that I would need something quite so, that's like the big station, the Avid Studio, like they edit movies on those things, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, the movie um, Zodiac that David Fincher made a couple years ago, that was edited on Final Cut. Now it was edited by professionals, and David fucking Fincher is one of our best directors, <laughs> but it was edited on a program that you can get off of Apple, you can get it in the App Store. There's no excuse you can't make quality shit. It's out there. However, um, uh, one second, Mike. Uh, there's a, the difference between iMovie and Windows Movie Maker and Adobe Premiere and Final Cut is huge. There's no, that I know of, there's no like in between. Um, you either have iMovie, which is just, I, I don't understand how that, I think it's supposed to be made simple, but I can't figure that out. I have no idea how the program works. But then when I moved, when you get to Final Cut, there is so much you can do that it can be overwhelming. When you go to export, and there's just a wall of things you can export, who knows what the fuck that is. It took me, it honestly, it took me years until I finally was able to compress things properly, and I probably could still be doing a better job. Um, but there's, there's YouTube, there's forums. If you have a question about Final Cut, chances are somebody on a forum somewhere has already asked that question. You, you know, going to film school would be probably nice and maybe easier, but there's Google, and there's YouTube, Look it up. Somebody is, you can probably figure it out. Somebody has probably already explained it to you. So, Final Cut can be really, really uh, daunting and really intimidating. But stick with it. it it's a, it, once you know how to use that program, you can make quality stuff. I'm actually using Final Cut Six, the um, academic edition. So this is like 6.06, .06, super old version, and uh, that's what I use. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, how, much how am I doing? Are you going to criticize me now? Is this <laughs> he loves you and maybe Jan and Jennifer. Oh, I know. I think and they're all going to be here. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. So how much does all this, uh, is there a cost? Like, uh, he's an aspiring. Uh, yeah. He does stuff on YouTube, which is the editing, all the other stuff. Unfortunately, those programs are not cheap. They are not cheap. Um, oh yeah, well, uh, who knows what will be in six, eight years? I mean, I had to get it. I got this Final Cut box, and it was, I think it was about nine hundred dollars. But it also came with soundtrack, and it came with um, a DVD Studio Pro, which I used to make my DVDs. So I, I, all that I have is like in this thousand dollar box. Um, you could, and the great thing about going to college is uh, if you buy Mac products, um, and I, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's exclusively Mac products, but you can get uh, student discounts. Definitely student discounts. Um, but then, like, Final Cut 10, or Final Cut X, I believe is not even in a physical form. You can only get it on the App Store. Yeah. Is that yeah. correct? Exactly. Like, so, it, in six, eight years, who knows where you're going to be? You're probably going to be way better off than I am. You're gonna have way better stuff and it might be cheaper. Um, and you can go the piracy route, 
you can download things illegally. Um, but I, oh, I know I, I lost a computer that ate itself, and I think it was because I was using Adobe Premiere that I downloaded that Python. Um, and that really let me up. Uh, poop creep. No. Yeah, it was. So I, I, I had that, that kind of. Um, I, I, I'm pretty adamant about trying to get the actual software legally. Yeah, because I feel like I feel like um, you can you can download to try. You know, maybe uh, maybe just something about Adobe Premiere that's so much better than Final Cut just works for you. Uh, so maybe download it and give it a shot, but don't depend on stuff you pipe. Uh, you need to have something reliable. So that'd be my advice to you. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I saw uh, Freddie Wong was talking about uh, how he got good at After Effects. Was he downloaded the 30, the 30 day thing, and every 30 days he would reinstall his OS. And he, he's like, I did this for years, and now he's huge on YouTube. And what a genuinely, what, what a genuinely nice man who totally deserves his fame. God, what a jerk. And so you got another job, or is this your job? Uh, this became my job for many years. Um, uh, getting to where I am, being able to fill a quarter of this room uh, <laughs> took, took years, and it does not happen overnight. Even if uh, you are kind of born with a predisposition to be good at certain things, you still have to figure it out and own it. Uh, nothing comes easy. You have to work for it. Um, but you have to work extremely hard. And whatever you do, work extremely hard. And when you're done with it, look at what you've done. If you're proud of it, then you've done, you've done good. If at the end of the day you're not, maybe you should find a new hobby, and that's okay. Okay, sure. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> I think I was just talking about, I was, I was getting into, um, sorry. Oh, editors. Final Cut, how is that? There's a small detail about getting your aspect ratios correct and how to bring it in. That is, I see a lot of kids, how is that? I see a lot of people, I'm sorry. I see a lot of people who have, the, the video game footage is really wide, and then they have their, uh, um, their live stuff is, you know, the proper aspect. Uh, not a lot of people are going to notice that. Um, most people won't, which is why script is so important. I've seen some, some videos look amazing, but this guy, the script was an afterthought, and this video is boring, and there's no one talking about it. Um, so, that's something you have to kind of figure out, the technical aspect. Now, if you're a creative person, then you're just going to get naturally good at scripts, you're going to get naturally good at cutting, you're going to get naturally good at reading. That technical stuff is going to take you years to figure out. Um, and I wish I had my computer here so I could show you some tips, but oftentimes what I do, Final Cut is nice in that uh, it starts out uh, full frame, which is 4x3. And if you just click and drag your uh, widescreen, because I shoot wide, 16x9, if you just click and drag that in there, It'll say, oh, this is different to what, what um, the project is. Do you want me to change it to adhere to what this is? You say, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, I found that even though the majority of my videos are gameplay, uh, which is, you know, truncated, smaller, uh, full frame, I still feel it looks nicer uh, if there's still those black bars on the side. Because you watch most widescreen TVs, Unless you're watching it on an HD channel, you have a giant black frame around you. The audience is used to seeing black around their uh, image. Uh, some people like to put borders on the sides. Um, I don't. That's, that's on them. Uh, it's on me. It's, it's, that's how it goes. But I feel like if you're going to shoot wide, you should show it in wide. Uh, it'll look better. But that's just me. Um, it is also important that uh, there, are, there, are, there are a million ways you can make a video. There's no one right way to make a video. There's a million ways to do it, but there are a billion ways you can screw it up. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff you just gotta deal with. And when you have gameplay footage, when you have uh, music, when you have your audio stuff, when you have your live action stuff, when you have your lighting, there's so many things that you can do. Um, a lot of that you just have to kind of figure it out and just learn by faith. It, it can't work. Do not worry. When it comes to the technical stuff, most people won't notice or won't care. Um, but also try and, and keep your technical stuff figured out. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was um, for audio. This was really interesting because I watched uh, James did a video for his, his behind the scenes stuff. And it was really interesting how him and I do our videos almost completely different. 
he uh, has, first off, um, a very simple mic. I have a Shure SM58 that I use, which is like a standard, which is like a standard, uh, like, comedian's mic, uh, any kind of live band, it's a simple mic. You can get it for about a hundred bucks. And it's a very good kind of standard quality mic. Um, and then I run that through a audio interface, an M audio uh, interface, because uh, you have these, these types of connectors here. Uh, and usually a, a, a computer or a laptop only has like, you know, headphone stuff. So you need to have, so you need to have something else that allow that to talk to the computer. So you have to get an audio interface. But still, that'll just get the mic to your computer. Just because you have a nice mic does not mean it's going to sound good. Um, and what I do is I put a lot of uh, EQing and compression on my, on, my, uh, on my audio to make it sound a little more full. It's a trick I, I learned when I was in radio. Um, a lot of radio announcers, if, if, you know, you listen to radio commercials, like the, the, the car sales type people. They um, use a lot of compression on their vocal stuff. And if you don't have that, it's going to sound very flat and kind of boring. You don't have to do a whole lot of, uh, uh, put a lot of process on it, a lot of embellishment. But it's important, just because you have a nice mic and a nice interface and a good program, you still need to know how to use those tools. So the secret to having quality videos is not the gear, it's knowing how to use the gear. You don't need good gear to make a good video. And it was interesting to me that James uses uh, one of those brands, usually you know, like an ME Best Buy or a Walmart. Um, Logitech? What's that? Logitech, you're talking about or you're talking about? Uh... No, he, he was, uh, it, they, they, they look like sure mics, but they're usually about 40, 50 bucks. But he runs his through a mixer, like an actual physical mixer. Like I EQ through Logic, Logic Pro, which I also make. Uh, music guy. So if I use, I do EQing uh, He does it like live, he does it uh, analog only um, with a mixer. Uh, but in, in, in my experience, those mixers can be rather expensive. And it is a lot easier to, uh, I have a preset. Once I've tinkered and gotten what I want my vocals to sound like, I just have a preset. So every single time I load up a new video, I just have a voiceover and I have that good to go. I've, I've changed it a little bit as my, my, my ear has grown more discerning as I've gotten better at it. But that's, that's the, the method that I use. James is a totally different method, but his, his stuff sounds great too. Any questions on using, getting audio? Yeah, you That's something um, I do. A, I do a podcast. I have fucking time for it. I do a podcast called Retro Beats, where I I, uh, and I I take old Nintendo songs and I make a whole podcast out of it because I'm a huge nerd about video game music and I make a radio show out of uh, out of Nintendo songs. But you'd be surprised how much embellishment I have to put on all those songs so they all sound full. And in doing that, I learned a lot about how controlling the sound wave through equalizing um, and putting compression on things and maybe a high cut here and a low cut. I'm like, you know, certain games, they have a low cut that you can't really hear, but it's on track. Little things like that. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, I, I, as I recall, um, there was a, a DJ preset in Logic, and then I just took, I want to say I took the high end and just like turned it up so the line kind of went like this. And just fiddle with it till it sounds good. Um, I can throw a little wisdom on this. Oh yeah, go ahead. Actually, here's actually a music producer knows it easy. Okay, when it comes to compression and EQing, if you don't know what it is coming in, most software applications that have some sort of digital EQ or compressor built in, they're gonna have a slew of presets, and they're gonna mess with a lot of the technical settings, but the first thing you wanna do is get a feel for how all this stuff sounds like. So, it is not problematic to just put your voice down, Put in a plug-in, and even looking for loops, loops, you can do this sort of stuff. FL Studio allows for, I believe, audio tracks and plugins and stuff. Go in there, go through some of the presets, just listen to how they sound different, and start developing trust in what your ear is telling you about what makes it sound good or not. Um, one big thing, if general rule of thumb, if you go overboard, there's a good chance you might cause more problems than you had coming in. And your first job would be like, is there a problem I need to fix here? Do just enough to kind of fix out things, maybe get things to be a little bit louder with the compressor, mm -hmm. maybe get rid of certain weird sounds with the EQ.
then maybe add a little bit of high end for brightness or low end for body reinforcement. But and don't you go. You don't need to do that much exactly. work on it because uh, something I learned in radio is talking over nothing can be kind of boring. Yes. Uh, so uh, I like to have music playing in what's called, a, like, in radio is called a music bed. And the way I kind of structure my videos around the music, um, I have little montages, start with music, like make little music videos, and then I fade that music down and I have it sitting in the background. So if there is like a fan or my refrigerator kicks on or a, a siren, excuse me, look, goes by my, you, you don't hear that kind of noise. There's a little fuzz or a little, uh, some kind of white noise in the background. You can't hear it because I have sharing on the track the video game music on it. So that also takes a lot of the palette up. Um, and that's, that's something that's, I, some people do it, and I just, I don't like the way it sounds when they have gameplay footage. Uh, and they're, they're, their vocal performances are fine, they're talking about what they're showing, what they're talking about, the scripts are fine. Then when they have video game footage, they leave in the audio from that gameplay footage. And so it's so stilted and jarring. Not really, it's, it's so like uh, jarring when it cuts from different pieces of the video game footage and it's uh, different songs and different sound effects, like in the background. It, so when I put yeah, when I put in my audio or when I put in my video stuff, um, I have the audio channels closed, so I just get the video, and then I have a song playing uninterrupted underneath it, and I just think that sounds good. That's my preference. But again, a million ways to do a video correctly, and that's just my style. Uh, but having having that also, even if you don't have the full track, just having the music from the video game does share the space, so you don't need to. Do you don't have to worry too much about putting a whole lot of embellishment and production on your audio. Right, and, and again, that's kind of going back to what I was mentioning earlier. It's really at the end of the day about you're trying to solve problems with the audio first that there might be in there, as opposed to making it sound amazing at the end product. So basically, if you have a music bed in there and your voice is just brought up loud enough so you can hear it clearly and you don't hear much else problematic with it, you're done, you're golden. So I mean, really, if you try to focus on simple, Problem solving mm -hmm. as your main approach to the audio production. Once you get it in there, I think you are generally on the right uh, the right path. But it's still at the end of the day. If your audio quality is kind of bad, mm -hmm. um, no one's going to notice if your script is good. If the script is king. Yes. So if you open up your mouth and you have something to say, most people are going to be like, "Oh, good point. That's a good point." Only jerks are going to be like, "Well, wait, give a better mic, dummy." <laughs> you know those people. I'll get to those in a second. Yeah. <laughs> How you use your voice in itself? Yes. Find a different pitch that works for you. There is a certain level of acting that I do. Um, it's really funny. I, I watch myself in outtakes, and uh, I always record so late, and I'm always super tired, and I'll mess up a line. I'm like, fuck. All right. This game is so great, and I just have to bring myself up to it. I don't really think that I go into much of a character, but I so suppose I do. And, and when, it, when you're writing, you have to write for a specific kind of voice that you're going to say and when you're going to talk in. And uh, yeah, you do have to put on the correct suit, as it were, even when you're editing, or even when you're, uh, when you're uh, recording your audio. So yeah, again, write for a specific voice, too. If, you, if you're going to gonna talk, write, write how you talk. No one talks like an encyclopedia. Unless you're doing like some EPS Nova thing. <laughs> Any more questions on kind of audio? Okay. Uh, I use uh, DVD-R. I record my. Uh, oh, did you have a question, man? I'm sorry. Did you have your hand up there? Oh. I use um, for for capturing gameplay footage. I've had problems with computers just dying, uh, and I'm really happy. I'm really glad that I had recorded all my stuff uh, physically and then moved it to digital. I know a lot of people like record gameplay footage right to their hard drive, right to their computer. Um, and that's fine until that hard drive cracks out on you and there goes all your footage. And if you need to re-edit your video for a DVD, you're screwed. Um, so I, I like to have DVD-Rs. I have a DVD recorder. I got, uh, had mine finally died. I got a new one at Walmart. Uh, Magnavox. I didn't even know they were still around. It was like a hundred bucks. Um, and there's, the great thing about that is once you have it on a DVD-R, it's there. And then you can export it any way you want. Um, there's a lot of ways you can export, and there's a lot of free software you can download because you're, you're ripping stuff off a DVD, but it's legal. 
because you made the DVD and it's, you know, it's not, it, there's a lot of stuff that won't work for uh, you know, ripping off of like uh, an actual uh, DVD you buy like Best Buy or something like that, but you don't have to worry about that legal stuff because you just have it, you know, your gameplay footage that you recorded. Um, I prefer it that way. Some people also use tape, record on a mini DVD tape. The problem with that is uh, you have an hour's worth of footage on that tape. It's going to take you an hour to export. Um, you have an hour, two hours worth of footage on your DVD, half hour maybe. Half hour, and also uh, it might, you can export it in a different way, take up less space. So that's my preferred method. And I have a big old, big old uh, uh, briefcase pretty much of all the uh, gameplay footage that I uh, exported. And that's just my preferred method. Um, oh, also, the cool thing about having uh, a DVD is there's only so much space you can put on your DVD. This prevents you from capturing way too much gameplay footage, and all of a sudden you've got hours and hours of gameplay footage for what, a 10 minute video? A, a 15 minute video, you don't need that much footage. It's just gonna kill you. Oh, I need this one clip of this one boss. Where is that footage? I have hours to sit through. It's just gonna make everything so much easier. Okay. So how many people actively make videos on the internet right now? So, how many of you have had to deal with people hating on you? Well, the most important thing to remember is uh, you're not alone. And also, don't, don't get whiny. You're not special. You, everyone gets it. No one is immune to hate. Uh, you are absolutely not special. And I guess I've been in this, this video making game long enough that when I see people whine and complain, why are people hating on me? Run, shut up. <laughs> Stay the hell off the internet if you can't handle it. Like, you're not special. I really, I, if it's, to me, the only one thing worse than somebody going in the comments, why are you saying mean things to me, is the dreaded, this is a video for all my haters. That's the kiss of death you're done for me. Like, grow up, grow up here. You're not special. Um, one thing to remember about haters is never trade blows with a hater. It's exhausting. It actually takes a lot of you to, to, you know, get into a war of words or a wit with a stranger. Um, it's a waste of energy, it's a waste of time. You have videos to make. And also, outside of YouTube, you have a life. <laughs> you have obligations, you have friends, you have family. Like, these people can't prevent you from living your life. You know, they might bug you, but just don't let that get to you. And remember, you know, it's nothing special about getting paid. Yeah. So do you not respond at all? Um, it's no. If it is just like you saw your phone, oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't respond at all, right? Don't even, no, don't. Don't respond. Because that person's not worth it. Like you're a nerd, you're a friend. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, you're yeah. ridiculous, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. It, it, it doesn't, so what does it mean? Can, you know? That's nothing. Don't respond. That, you're, you're better than that. Yeah. You're better than that. So, to be more specific and along that line, how do you feel about people who are disputing what you say? Do you go in and like try and no, that's the well, there's a difference between you're wrong or something. What do you No, some people have their points. Um uh, in my Mega Man 10 video, uh, I made a point of saying the soundtrack is bad. Um, and a lot of people had a problem with that, but that's that's up to taste, and that's totally fine. Um, but then there is a lot of debate over I didn't use any of the music from Mega Man 10 in my video. And people thought that undermined my argument, and I said I decided that using, using music from other Mega Man games undermined my argument less. And so they actually had a point. And it was kind of a lesser of two people situation. And some people thought that uh, I should have used music from Mega Man 10. Um, and that would have made my argument more, uh, more compelling. I thought, it would have, I thought it would have undermined it. And sometimes people, they can be really emotional and they can be unprofessional uh, or just really unpolite and rude, but they might have a point. Uh, so take hate with a grain of salt, too. And also remember, you know, maybe your script does suck. Maybe your editing was shitty. Maybe you should do better. I mean, you can't stop hate. It's going to happen. Try and take something good out of it. And also, you can kind of, you, you'll get more resilient that way. Like, you know, you can watch a video and go, I wasn't really feeling bad acting. I was kind of, I was a little tired. Someone says, God, way to phone in that acting, Derek. Hey, he, yeah, he's right. <laughs> you know, so just try and take, try and make yourself better. Um, about that DVDR, I just want to ask 
Oh, sure, yeah. So you can plug it in the other video, so you can play the game and record what you want. It's like a DVD player with record. Yeah. Okay, so that is a better way to just shoot. I, I, oh, yeah, if you want to photograph your TV, you can. <laughs> but it looks really bad. So you can get so you can get DVD. Okay, if you are going to photograph your TV, um, do it right. There are so many people who right. love to let's play, yeah. and they'll just like point their TV at an angle, and it just looks like it looks like crap. It's so bad. Like try and get it square, try and make it look good. You put in You put in some effort. It's worth like putting in effort. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You just keep what you need. You don't. You don't need ten minutes of level three. Just get one play to a level three. Call it good. Well, and one other, one other point to keep in mind about one of the advantages of a DVR recorder, maybe when they're recording, it also gives them that little time readout, so if you want to take note of, maybe you try a stage and you say something really good happened, oh it happened at three minutes into the so recording, you can, like, take and, it hey, and then yeah. you can take notes on that. Oh, also, DVDRs are super cheap, and they're always going to sale. Check, check like Best Buy or wherever, like, they always have like schools of 50 or 100, you know, crazy cheap. So. Must you think about that taste? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've not used capture cards. I, I don't know. I don't even know how they work. <laughs> but, well, also, well, back then, like every. That was right when Blue Run. I bought mine in 2008 before it just it died recently. Uh, Blu ray was the new, the new hotness. And so. To make up for it, all DVD players had DVD off, had recording capability. So now it's a little more difficult to find. But a couple years ago, DVDRs were pretty easy to find. They're relatively cheap. Um, but so were, uh, I think capture cards are probably cheaper. But I've just, I, I've been burned too many times by computers dying and hard drives dying. And I just, I don't feel comfortable. So I would recommend uh, getting DVD off. Uh, I'll do the tip from here first. Yeah? What's your uh, opinion on fraps? Do you prefer, I don't know, prefer fraps? Yeah, fraps. It's a uh, recording program that you can download and you can either pay for it or get it. Oh, for emulation? Can. Yeah, it's for emulation for like uh, emulators. It basically it records right off of your right off of your monitor. So if I, you have um, a laptop, you can record right off of it. I have so, I have so many games that I, I, uh, I'm hoping to move out of Alaska soon. That I don't know if I can take them all with me, so I might actually have to utilize that. It's awesome. Uh, the but, only problem um, is it skips a lot, though. You well, you get to, that one if you record onto an external hard drive, yeah. then it's a lot better. But yeah. I use that for my videos, and I get very minimal skip as mm -hmm. long as I record onto You also it. might not get as much flicker. Yeah, no, you don't get any flicker at all. Yeah. It's all right from the emulator. Um, I, 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 I like to collect games, so yeah. my stance is like... No, me too. So. Yeah, it's like, you play a lot of games when you emulate it, that's yeah. like, say, you work out with well some steroids. Yeah. Anyone can do steroids. <laughs> well, like, if I want to record a video for, like, let's say, Final Fight for Super Nintendo, yeah. and I have the cartridge, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do all this editing on my computer anyways. I may as well just play it on yeah, there. I, I still love the cartridge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he was next. Um, well, I, the very first two, two videos that I did, I had them done because I had such a crappy old camera. Um, I actually had no other means to capture footage, so I just squared it up behind my couch and just get it bored. And that developed into my style because I had a leather couch, and if I shit with it at all, it made a lot of noise. And also, I'd be recording from the television speaker, which is a few feet away, that sound would be awful. So I, I, I only could depend on that camera to supply the video. I had to get the audio elsewhere, and that's where I got the idea to just take the gameplay, the song, and just play the whole thing out, and that'll be kind of like the bed, the whole thing's asunder. So you can do that, but I don't know you'll be able to get the preferred audio. But it is a good way to get video, uh, but I can't, I, 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 would, I would say it's better to use like a DVD-R, because um, it's probably more relaxing. Well, DVD R, I guess, like DVD recorder. I just look for a DVD with recording, and there's like DVD minus R, those are the young blank discs. So you went at somebody with a DVD. when I export it with my preferred uh, format, um, can be about 10, 20 gigs. 
I'd say uh, when I'm done with the video, a whole folder is about uh, 10, 20 days. Oh, okay. if, it's, if it's like for my Earthbound and my Godwell's quest, those ended up being pretty cool. Uh, I think the Earthbound re-end ended up being about 100 gigs of all the footage that I had. And that was too much. Generally, you'll find that moving on our server is a good idea. Definitely, yeah, I have three external hard drives in the <laughs> that, and that's about right. Yeah. Is there a question over here? Uh, I was going to throw oh. a suggestion. The um, person who recommended perhaps, perhaps is an option to be able to Windows to keep up in a Mac file. The closest variant is the application called ScreenFlow, which does desktop screen capturing mm -hmm. and also has an integrated multi track video editor. Well, aren't there, there's emulation software that just you can hit yeah, record in that software? Yeah, another option as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Small, you want it looking good, you want to do it fast. Pick two. If you want it small and looking good, it's gonna take a really long time. If you want it done quickly, it's probably gonna be really big or look like crap. Like of those three things, you have to pick two. You cannot have all three. Um, which is why like places like Pixar have rendering arms, like just enormous computers all working, just rendering stuff. Because there's just no quick way to make a really good looking video sometimes if it's or if you, want, if you want to, like, it's game trailers still forces you to make uh, your videos under 100 megs, still. And I don't know how to do that and make it look good. Thank God, like, YouTube um, has, uh, it's like hardly a limit of two gigs, I think. And Flip is still a gig, which is totally easy. And that's, 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 you've got a lot of room to make uh, your stuff look good. Are there any, the rest of this presentation really is about my de de dealing with haters dealing with criticism. That's pretty much the rest of the presentation. If you have any more questions on technical stuff, if I, if I missed anything that you had, um, I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I have the perfect one, but I, I found one that works well. And uh, you know, it's a quick time called H.264. Uh, and I, I very seldom export higher than uh, 7, 720p. Um, you can do 1080, but I, I mean, I have a pretty fast internet connection. Even for me, to watch a video in 1080 still takes a really long time for it to load. It just seems, seems like, who's, who's watching a review of an NES game in 1080? I, I don't know. Do you have internet in Alaska? Yeah. Do you have internet in Alaska? Yeah. We still have igloos, though, yeah. That's big work. We're a bazillion people. Um, uh, for audio exporting, uh, AAC is a good format. Um, a lot of this stuff, oh god, the, the days of trying to get stuff look good, looking good on YouTube, looking good on Blip used to be a nightmare because they were only Flash. And if you have a Mac, that's not, not helping at all. And uh, for a while, H.264 was like the best adapter for Flash because it would upload it to Blip and then they would convert it to Flash and it was just a nightmare. Uh, and they've since changed it to H.264, and YouTube and Vimeo have always been so much easier in terms of uh, keeping the quality looking good. Um, the last couple of years, they've, when YouTube first started out, that was not the case. These last couple of years, getting a video looking good on YouTube is not that hard. Uh, same with Vimeo. Um, and also, uploading. Something about uploading on Blip is a pain in the ass. It, it, it likes to crash and not even tell you. Um, Oftentimes when I upload on Blip, I do it before I go to bed. I let it go and just let it go all night. Because using the, using any internet at all, it seems, messes it up. Like YouTube, you can actually have it uploading and still be checking emails and watching stuff. It doesn't seem to bother. Um, I, have, I don't have a lot of experience with Vimeo. But I, I know whenever I go to a Vimeo uh, a video, it usually is of extremely good quality. But when it comes to exporting and proper compression, man, 
you just have to, you just have to fail until you figure it out. And uh, I say good luck to you. May, may, may your first thousand uh, exports. May you, may you fail your first thousand exports quickly. Do you think the the future is portable devices? You know, your, definitely, I, I, I prefer you know the iPad and you know. I, I had to where I had to special order my camera because I needed it on tape because I had a lot of tape. My old camera was on tape. I lost that, and I needed. I knew I was gonna have to re-edit all the videos on my DVD, so I had to get one with tape. Everything is uh, everything is digital now, so it, that that's not the future. That's the present. Hmm. That's just how it is. You, you cannot go to Walmart. Or uh, Best Buy and get a camera with, with, that uses. You can still buy tapes, but you can't get a camera that uses many DVD tapes. And I don't. Know, I, I really like having that hard copy. Um, but I, I need to upgrade my stuff, and I think I'm just gonna have to go with. Uh, I think the camera you're using has a hard drive, right? Um. Well, it uses SD cards right now. Yeah, an SD card. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't have tape. That's, right. That, that's all that digital. Yeah, that's, that's how it's gotta go. Oh, and also, um, if if. Here's a good advice for you. If you're up and coming and you want to test this out, those flip cams, um, well, I guess they're actually going out of business now, but they, they're they not bad. And if you are doing what I'm doing, which is just set up a camera and sit on the couch, not move it at all, um, they look fine. Naturally, a camera with a lens and all that stuff's going to look better. And this is a. Uh, no, mom, we don't want to throw down hundreds of dollars, maybe a couple hundred. That's a good place to start. Yeah, the sound is not going to be very good. To go from YouTube on the yeah. computer yeah. to the next. Yeah, so that's a good place to start. Those uh, flip cams are, are not bad. And also, uh, the new iPhone, this is not the new iPhone, but my friend bought the new iPhone and I played with the camera and holy crap. Yeah, that's why the flip cams are going away, because that new camera is insane. So, if you want to get a, 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 a smartphone, these cameras are incredible. I was at a festival back home. And it was a 48-hour film fest where you had to shoot, edit, and prepare a short film 48 hours. Um, you were given the prompts and what to do right before it started. And uh, there were a couple people that made their films entirely on iPhones, and they did not look that bad. So uh, also, you, if you want to just kind of dip, yeah, yeah. So if you just want to dip your toe into it without really putting down a lot of money, that I mean, yeah, on this next summer, man, mow some lawns. 
and break some leaves and stuff, and uh, get some money. Where did you find the new camera? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you can get that. Hey, mom, it's going to be good for Christmas, mom. That's the end that you got to use. Christmas in July. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's your uh, opinion on uh, Let's Plays versus the reviews that you do on your site? Um, I used to have uh, a very negative view on Let's Plays uh, because I just looked at Let's Plays on YouTube. And there are, I think anybody who, who, even if you are a fan of Let's Plays, you have to acknowledge that there are a lot of shit Let's Plays out there. Just people not even trying. Uh, but there are a lot of people that do put in a lot of good work. Um, and uh, after seeing people like Proton John and Chuck, Chuck Conroy, he's and, awesome. Yeah, um, I, I met them at MAGFest, and it was weird. They walked up to me like, oh, we wanted to meet you. It's like, you want to meet me? You got like a quarter billion subscribers. You're talking to them. Um, they do a really good job. People that like, uh, like the Something Awful community is a lot of people that uh, uh, do some real quality work, and uh, they're really entertaining videos. Uh, and that's kind of where I got, once I saw that like Let's Play can be done right, that's where I got the idea for, is it really that bad? Because that's sort of a Let's Play program, but I, I really added a lot of it. I, I really put the knife. Like the uh, Resident Evil Survivor video was uh, over two hours of footage. I want to say it was uh, 130 minutes, and I cut it down to just over an hour. And I think most Let's Play programs would just let the whole thing run. But also, people that are good at Let's Play, they are the type of people that can't hit record and be compelling and really just spill gold for an hour and a half. I am not capable of doing that. So I have to uh, script my stuff and edit my stuff out. Yeah, that's how it is. Yes. So it's never really been important, um, but it's something that you can always get better at. That's on you. How good do you want your videos to be? Do you want to just make, make a really good script and then call it good? That's on you. There's a million ways to do it right. And, but, and anyway, people are going to hate on your shit anyway. Um, I wanted to talk about four types of, of, of haters, four flavors. Um, of haters, and, and why you should not really trade blows with any other pub. If you want to go trade blows with a hater, do it very carefully. Uh, because not everybody is actually really hating on you, or they might have ulterior motives. There are, um, there's trolls, there's jerks, there's idiots, and, and then there's fans. Now, trolls are just trying to get a rise out of you. They're going to call you fag, you say you suck. It's whatever, you know, or they might, if they're really getting at you, they might get really, really specific, but if, if somebody is just really being mean to you, they're just trying to get a rise out of you. That's all they're doing. And if you talk to them, they win. You cannot, you might be able to outwit that troll, but then you're going to get the reputation, oh, he takes the bait. You can throw it out there. He's going to take the bait. He's going to bite. Don't get that reputation. And also, again, the thing is that... I think underpinning this is you have videos to make. This is a waste of time. It's not worth it. Also, there's jerks who just feel entitled that everything on the internet must meet. Why is it not perfect for me? 
I want everything now, give it to me now, it's perfect, that's not good. You can't please those people, so don't try. And also, you don't make videos for jerks, so they have no right to be watching in the first place, so screw them. That's just how the world works, you can't change that. Then you have idiots. Now idiots might mean well, and they don't realize they're actually being extremely insulting to you. The mind of an idiot, when they type something is, I didn't like that video. I didn't think the editing was very good, man. You read it as, I didn't like that video. The editing wasn't very good, man. <laughs> and, you, and you respond like, oh, fuck you, jerk. Why you got to be like that? But in their head, they didn't think, why, why are you being so mean back to me? They don't understand that they were kind of being insulting and really rude, because they're idiots. So all of a sudden, you have a person who meant well and wasn't trying to be mean, and you respond back in, in a way that they think is totally uncalled for, and then you got a flame war going on, and you look like an asshole. And the thing is, is you can't really win. You, even if you go down in the trenches and you beat that person at a game of weight, you don't really win. You kind of will always lose. And also, they mean well. They might actually be a fan, and now you just, now you just lost a fan. Now you have a reputation of, of, of uh, you know, having a short fuse. So just, you know, maybe they didn't like that video. Oh, that's cool. Whatever. Let it be. Then you have, um, and this is a really weird one, and I don't mean this in any kind of mean way, but uh, some, some of the meanest hate, not the meanest hate, but the stuff that's going to take you the most aback is uh, from your fans. And fans feel entitled, and they can be, uh, because they support you, and they like you, and they watch your videos. They can be very, very critical. And you don't want to be mean to them because they are your fans, and they do care about you. Uh, but they can get really picky sometimes, and they can be really mean. But maybe they have earned that, and you need to kind of respect that. So you don't want to jump in and just be like, oh, fuck you. Because then that's, you just burn a bridge of the fan. And you're going to get that reputation of being kind of a jerk. You can't handle criticism. We're all human. I mean, I, I get comments, and I'm like, oh, what a, and even I get upset sometimes. But you have to just learn to take it with a grain of salt. And try and take the best that you can out of it. So if you want to get in a discussion with your fans, or just any kind of idiot, is it really worth it? And do it very carefully. It's really easy to cross that line. You have to straddle that line just right. Um, a good rule of thumb is never respond in sarcasm. Because sarcasm has no context in text. Sarcasm is like, great video. But then you write great video, I'll pull it out the video. Right? Uh, um, but don't be like, whatever, jerk, you stupid. You know, like, don't say that to people because they will take it the wrong way. And again, like, two well intentioned comments, all of a sudden you got a flame wall. And someone making make a YouTube video, and like, Derek is a jerk. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to you because you're a jerk. And then, you know, that's just not healthy for anyone to have that kind of video. So never respond to sarcasm. Try and be professional, say what you mean, easy on the jokes. If you want to, you want to respond to sarcasm, if you want to make a joke, be very, very careful. Be extremely careful because the chances are they will take it the wrong way, and then all of a sudden you were just trying to make a video, and you were just trying to, to defend your case, and now you got strangers who hate you. So you have to be really, really careful with that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. It's important to remember that uh, everyone gets hate. You're not special. For what it's worth, you're not special. It sucks, but that's just how it goes. Um, don't go telling people, stop saying mean things about me. I grow a pair. Like, I've seen people do that. I'm like, what? Like, I have no say. I have no sympathy for those kind of people because they think they're special. They're, how come everyone's hating me? No, you're just on the internet. That happens. Um, but hate is also a measure of success. If no one's hating, no one's watching. And also, remember this, and this is a fact of the internet, most people don't realize. Look at the ratio between views, likes, and comments. And I guarantee you, the ratio between comments and views is gonna be like one to 100. It's so, like, the people that comment on your videos do not represent your audience. They represent such a tiny part of your audience. And then if you look at your comments, I guarantee you, you're going to have, for every fag suck, 
You're gonna have 10 people saying, awesome video, I love that joke. I'm totally playing this game. Yeah, new videos, great to have you back. So you're talking about a fraction of a fraction of an audience that's hating on you. And you're gonna worry about them? And you're gonna ignore all these nice people that are saying nice things about you over here? That's kind of rude to them too. So look at that silver lining. And you can go to any video on the internet, I guarantee you there'll be way more views than comments. Most people, now granted, yes, some people watch videos multiple times, but still that ratio is so, so divided, so different. Most of the people on the internet do not comment. So your audience does not comment. That does, so when you read the comments, that does not represent your entire audience. And it is also <coughs> important, this kind of falls under hate, hating on people. Fans that just love you right away. Um, I'm always really, I'm kind of hurt when I get a, a message from a fan. Great video, I loved it. It's been up for five minutes, and it's a 20 minute video. You have, it's not physically possible, you've seen the whole thing. So I, I, I appreciate you saying that, but that's not gonna help me improve. So also, don't let shit go to your head. Don't get an ego. It is, it's really hard to not get an ego sometimes. When you're making videos, you've got an audience, and you're staying up till three, four in the morning, and you're working your butt off, but you know people are gonna watch your videos, you have an audience, it's super flattering, it can't go to your head. We're all human, but remember that, you know, take a step back and realize you're not, your shit does in fact stink. And it's also just video games too. I'm sure most of us are reviewing video games, so that's another important thing to remember. Uh, and, um, this last one, I want to make a point, and it's kind of messed up, but it is how it is how this world works. Um, I am white, and I am male, and therefore I am privy to have to. I do not give as much hate as other people would, and so sometimes when I'm getting hate, I have to realize I've still got it pretty good. And I know that's really messed up to say, but it's a fact. And that's how this world turns. So, um, remember, you don't have it that bad. Everyone gets hate, it could be worse, and it's also a measure of success. And remember, maybe your video does suck, so make another one, and get it better. In fact, your old stuff is always gonna be shit. You're never gonna like your old stuff. It's because you're always getting better, and you're always gonna make another video, and there's always gonna be people hating on you, but there's always gonna be more people that like you. So, that pretty much brings it to the end. Anyone, any more questions? Oh, okay. yeah. On exposure, so when you first started out, you said you had a website or more websites. Yeah, I, uh... So if you start out, well, how do you get exposure? Do you know your things? What do you do to get exposure? I can't really comment because I totally grabbed the, whole, the, the coattails okay. of somebody. So I can't really comment because... It says it's a website or a website, so you can grow a website. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on RetroWarTV.com, um, and I actually got this, hell yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, okay, uh, there's, we got Joey right there, we got the Game Chasers right there, we got, yeah, we got Pat, we got that, and also, I just got a text from Eric showing up, and, like, dude, yeah, check, check the app, it's, uh, Saturday morning, right guys? 11 a.m. 11 a.m., so definitely check that out, um, and, uh, now, now, but also, there's a difference between making making good videos and making successful videos. Right. Just because you make good work does not mean you will be instantly successful. Right. There are some people who make shit and they're super successful. Okay. That's, but that's again how the world works. So um, if you make you do good work, people will recognize it and your fans will appreciate it. But also, don't expect to blow up overnight. That's not normal. Do you label it a certain way? You know, um. Branding is important, but I've not found, uh, once you have an audience, uh, once you get those subscriptions going, and you know, there's Twitter, there's yeah, Facebook, there's ways to keep your name out there. Yeah. Probably the best thing you can do, and this is something I have failed at, I've been horrible at this, but um, this is one reason why James is very successful for years. For years that man had a new video every two weeks. He had that reliable schedule, and that is not something I've been able to do. Um, he was also bound by contracts for what it's worth, so uh, he has told me like it was not fun for him. It was really stressful to have a pump on a new video every two weeks for years. But that really had a lot to do with his fame, because of what, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every other Wednesday, every fortnight, 
you can expect a new video. So if you can follow that form format, like web comics. So web comics are. Until hooked on somebody's coattail or have a contract, mm -hmm. how do you get that? I have no idea. I don't have a contract. Um, I, I, I do this because I want to, and that's all I know. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're an entertainer, there is an allure to the spotlight. And it's not something that you have to really understand. It's not something that other people have to understand. It's just something that you have to do. Why you do it? Why you love it? I don't know. I just know that I do. And, that, and that's, that's good enough. Indeed. I had some question over here. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to have you just like add that on to her question. Um, yeah. I am just starting my show, and uh, I got in about a year ago with a... What's the name of your show? Um, Geek Critique. Geek Critique? And where can they find that show? Uh, well, it's... Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, man. I believe it was straight. I believe it was straight. Yeah, no, I, I totally feel it, yeah. Um, I belong to uh, a, uh, a film director company in the third era called Film Bumbles. Film Bumbles. I was not a meeting when we decided on that name. Okay. But um, I am, uh, I've got a lot of, you know, exposure with the very world of STDs and I'm using the camera 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 and his point was, I am filming five episodes and all my episodes are Something else. 
Yeah. Move it to the back burner. Yeah. Let it simmer, but like it, it, that, that for burnout, that's I, I really don't know the answer. It's something that has really become a problem in the last couple of years for me. Yeah. And I, by doing other projects, um, it's, um, it's that's what I do. Uh, so I recommend put it on the back burner, and then also it's old. So when you go back to it, it's gonna be shitty. You can make it better. Yeah. So that will probably be good. And also, yeah, I just work on something else and come back to it. Um, there are a couple of production companies in Alaska where they're a union. I really hate Anchorage, I should say. They're union, they have fees, and I'm just some dude who worked out of my apartment. And so when I walk up to a client and I ask for a couple grand, just a couple, you know, that's nothing. That's nothing. Oh, can I have $2,000 for this project? Yeah, sure. So I, I, I don't know that I can take my business with me outside of uh, Alaska. Well, maybe I can. I don't know. I'm not counting on it so much. But I do have business oh, license. Yeah. Yes. It's actually a lot of it's through the uh, university. There's local university, and I, I do a lot of distance education type stuff. It's nothing. It's it's nothing that one my fans would be interested in, and two, it's, it's stuff that I can, I seldom have. I, I can share. It, I would be I would get in a lot of trouble if I showed some stuff because I I did, I did a documentary one time about developmentally disabled uh, people. And uh, those people are very shy, of course, very protected by the state. If I just showed that stuff on YouTube, I would get in extremely a ton of trouble. Uh, mine get fined, even I don't even know what would happen. So uh, it's nothing. It, it pays the bills. I like to say that I'm a blue collar filmmaker because I don't, I don't make films, and you know, I don't, I, I'm not making money on that. I just do stuff that pays the bills. So how do you get a fit like that video? Because I'm a Oh, that, um, it's big, you know, Anchorage is a small place. So it's only for Anchorage? Yeah, it was only for Anchorage at the moment, but I, I, I could, just, I, it fell into my lap. Well, I guess the, the lesson is, it fell into my lap, and I did not let that opportunity pass me by. I realized, I, I said, shit, my foot is in this door, I need to go through it. And that's, that's, how I, how my foot got in that door is just, the dice rolled up. I got that, I got, you know, but you I got that love the seven or whatever. Um, I had been doing the happy dirt for long enough and I wanted me to do, uh, just videotape a couple presentations. And I kind of thought, yeah, I know how to do that because I've done dumb YouTube videos. It was enough for me to adapt it. Uh, it, it, it to just for present, yeah, the Center for Human Development is, uh, uh, I might even get a temp job working with them because I made a joke to my client. When is he going to give me an office already? And then she was like, um, well, we'll talk next year. <laughs> and there's a question behind Oh, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of nurture and nocturnal. So do you get a lot more done in the winter? Uh, yeah, but that's probably because <laughs> some, like, when I was working on this DVD, um, I would work until, like, sometimes I would work for, like, 24 or 36 hours straight, and then I would crash and sleep for, like, all hours, and because during this time of year the sun is up for seven hours, um, I would just not see the sun for a while, and that's bad. Um, I find working from home, I spend most of my money on food. I eat out because it gets me out of the house with people in reality, and it's really important that you get out and talk to people and just chat with, them. just get out of the house and be with people. You can't just cook yourself. It's cheaper to cook yourself food. But I realized that's kind of what I, that's how I like, just I have the necessity to get out and be with people, so I eat out a lot. Um, but I, I, do med I do work best at night, I've always worked best, I always study best at night, and I be at it best at night, but you can't just work at night, because um, sometimes you have to be at a shoot at nine in the morning, and uh, you're running two mics and two cameras, and you are by yourself, you cannot be, oh, I'm tired, you gotta be there, you sign my contract. Your name is on contract now. Uh, you have to be there, you're bound by it. And also, if you want to work with that client again, you gotta show up proper. So buy some slacks, get a couple pairs of doctors, go to bar. Banana Republic has really nice, classy looking t-shirts for cheap. Get some decent dress shoes. Just try and look good. You know, you might show up to their office and it's casual Friday. You don't work in that office. It's not casual Friday for you. You're dropping up paperwork to your client, dress like you're going to work. And, uh, 
right, yeah, I think this has got to be the last question because I think we're coming up on the event. Oh, man. No, I'll take Oh, okay. <laughs> I reached to it then. All right, so any last questions? Oh, why not? I'm not sure if this was already asked. I kind of walked in late. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm really <laughs> <laughs> if the question was already asked, I'm really sorry. Um, if you found one day that you had little to no audience watching your show, would you be st still doing videos? I don't mean that to be like disrespectful. You know, no, um, don't make it the wrong way. Take, working on videos was the first time I felt like I found success as an entertainer. I had been doing music for years. I did radio. I used to perform open mics, and uh, you know, um, like for, I really started Starship Amazing with uh, my friend Calvin over there because I was not very good at playing guitar in front of people and doing open mics, and so I liked music, but I wasn't good at performing it. And then I started recording it. And I wasn't really good at that either. And then Calvin and I had this idea, let's make a dumb little techno song, and that was way more fun. And then, fast forward five years later, and uh, you know, we have made many records, and uh, you know, uh, have made a, a, a nice fan base. And it's really cool to make not a lot of money, but the grocery bills and the gas money is definitely comes from record sales. And things. So uh, if, if um, it's, it's that allure of the spotlight, I find some way to get in that spotlight. And uh, to me, I feel like the happy nerve was the first time I found I found the right place. But I was always trying, and it's just, I think it's just, some people are like that, and I'm going to always be in pursuit of that spotlight. And I think that's got to be it, guys, friends. So thank you very much.